So good evening and welcome to another edition of How to Rock the Stage. I'm the host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager, back on another beautiful, beautiful Wednesday night. I've had a great day today. I have been uh, producing and co-hosting another event all day long with the Joy Lee Symposium. I love doing what I get to do by helping to coach, equip, and produce now other people's events to make them pop and shine. And I love doing that here on Rock the Stage, and I love coaching and helping you reach your dreams. That's why we do this every week. I'm here to help you grow, scale, elevate, learn amazing tips and tricks so you can keep doing what we do every week and whatever you're trying to do to rock your stage. Tonight, you're in for a treat. You have a lady joining us tonight that truly rocks the stage in a very unique way by creating a movement. And we're gonna have a great conversation tonight about how that movement has changed and morphed and of course, the impact now of the virtual stage as well. Coming up next week, we are gonna be back again and we're gonna have Melissa Rees with us we're going to go back to the idea of your story matters, which will weave into some of the conversation here tonight as well. Your story matters, so tell them and tell them well. Melissa, Melissa Reeves is a storyteller, and she's going to help us learn how to do that better with our brand story, our own personal story. So come back next week on March 23rd. Then on March 30th, we wind down the month of, Mar month of March with Steve Lowell. And Steve is going to be talking about crafting message, crafty messages. Not just crafting it, but how do you make it crafty, entertaining, fun, engaging? That's what Steve's going to be back on March the 30th. And May is already lined up to be a smash hit. We'll talk about that again coming up soon. Tonight, though, is about how to create a moment and a movement and make impact. Be very clear on that. A moment, a movement, and an impact. It's going to be really exciting tonight as Halise Bridges, affectionately known as Grandma Sparky. People call me Trigger. This is Grandma Sparky coming our way tonight. She is an advocate for children's rights, known as the First Lady of Acknowledgement, the creator of communities that unite humanity through the power of love. She's a mentor to youth and adult leaders, teachers on, on how to create communities that transform angry, apathy, and violence into dignity, respect, among over 60 seconds or less. I talked about its impact. It's fast. It's a moment. We're going to talk about that tonight. By the way, Jack Canfield, the world-renowned speaker, says this about our guest tonight. Police Grandma Sparky Bridges is a cross between Martin Luther King, Lucille Ball, and Gandhi. Take your breath. You're in for a, a fun ride here tonight. She's an unstoppable pioneer, creating in dignity and respect among people. By the way, Grandma Sparky is a TEDx presenter, best-selling author, speaker, trainer, mentor to Fortune 500 companies, organizations, educational institutions, and military worldwide. Grandma Sparky is a winner of the TKF Gandhi Nonviolence Award. That's a big shout out. Leap to Success Women Changing the World Award and the Golden Society for Female Entrepreneurs Kindness Award. Welcome to the stage tonight, my friend and wow, amazing woman, Elise Grandma Sparky. Great to have you with us, Grandma. I just, I, I want to just give you, uh, give us a shout out for everybody that's listening. Because the one thing that's so exquisite is hearing what you've done. <laughs> huh. It's true. <laughs> no, it really it? is. It's like, it's I mean, not there's everybody... nothing wrong with your success and bragging on it a little bit, right? There's nothing wrong yeah, with that. But it's the way you spoke it. You know, you, you, know, you got the cadence. I just want to acknowledge that. <laughs> well, you have done so much with an amazing journey of life. And we're going to talk about the Blue Ribbon Movement, your story. But take me back, way, 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 way back. Right. What even made you think you could have a global impact? Did you ever really, really think police could make a global impact? Not a clue. I, I'm, I'm going to be 80 years old in, a, in another week or so. And, and this was 40 years ago. So I think when things come through you, it's spontaneous. I was a millionaire. My husband and I had a home on the ocean. We had the American dream. And, uh, and he was beloved and entrepreneur. And I was a very successful business person. But here's the deal. Behind closed doors, and I think a lot of us don't know what happens behind closed doors, this uh, magnificent man that I adored, looked up to, and so did everybody else, also was a very controlling and a intimidating and abusive gentleman. Um, and so I was very subservient around him, like, like invisible. And yet in the business world, I was very successful. So the question that you asked is, did I know? 
Yeah. Clueless. <laughs> I'm a I'm a, a real estate agent. I, I buy 60 homes in six months, you know, like that for no money down because I didn't have any money. But again, part of there's there's a trend in great dreamers and in, in great inspirational leaders like yourself. Right. And, that tragedy brings triumph in dreams. There's something about the pain and the angst that pulls you to something larger to yourself. Do you do you agree with that? Hundred percent. I mean, you know, it, it, that that until you you can't have compassion until you've gone through something that is just horrific, and then you get the other side, and then you can see other people around you that were in the same boat, and at least you can understand them. Because in my day, back in the 40 years ago, nobody understood anybody. We didn't talk. Don't air your dirty laundry in the public, right? Right. Well, now, though, people are talking. Over 50 million people throughout the world yes. have been impacted by what you call the blue ribbon message. Exactly. It's been translated into 12 different languages. Now, Correct. give us a snapshot. What is the blue ribbon message? Because we're going to talk about the growth, the ascension of this, but what, really, what is it? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tool. Uh, think of it as a compass for due north. It will focus, the tool focuses on, on what is working and keeps us in conversations that uplift and unite humanity. Um, it's a blue ribbon. It says who I am makes a difference. And I, the way to describe this is this. I began to, um, I left my husband and I was pretty broken and I didn't, uh, and I decided to give back to my community and become co-chair of the San Diego Hunger Project. And in the process of that, I discovered that most people were really starving for recognition. They wasn't food. They needed to be loved just like me. And so I created a, blue, a tool, I, I prayed on it and said, what can I do to make a difference? Because I'm pretty messed up right now. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and I, I, so I, I, I started to honor people, my kids, teachers and my neighbors and tell them how great they were. And, uh, and I asked them, would they accept my gift? I originally was a button and I just pinned it on them without permission, but now we have a ribbon. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you don't do that really. You're not supposed to. But it's very intimate. It's very personal. I mean, when you actually do this, it, it does turn people who are like, oh, I don't need that little snicking blue ribbon to, exactly. oh my gosh, it chained me. I, I want to give you a, a short story because um, back in 1984, I met Jack Canfield. You mentioned him a little bit earlier. And he was speaking, uh, and I was invited to, to, to go to this event and ask him if he would you know, speak to me after about this project. Um, and so he sat out with me and I, I honored him. And I said, well, what do you think? And he said, well, on the scale of one to 10, it's about a three. I said, all righty then. I said, hey, here's a ribbon, go and honor my, my guest that I brought with me, Dr. Ashley, Angela Ashbrenner. And I said, he said, all right, he stood up, he holds the ribbon. I said, you say, look at from her, your heart through your eyes, look at her, say her name and say, Dr. Ashbender, I have a blue ribbon. And I, and, and I wanna honor you. It says who I am makes a difference. I'd love to honor you and tell you how much you make a difference to me. He turns around, he looks at me, he says, this isn't so easy, is it? I said, no, it's intimate. And then he honors, and the minute he honored her and I said, now ask her if you, she would accept your gift, Mike, because you don't, it's, it's acknowledged me, you gotta re, be able to receive when you do this, you're giving, but you have the other person, most people don't know how to receive. And I said, you have to ask, would you accept my gift? And may I have permission to place it on you after they accept? And if so, you place it above your heart, goes up to like an airplane, up toward all your greatest dreams coming true. And then you have to take the spark from your heart and put it in the ribbon. It's a sound that makes dreams come true. And the sound is bing. <laughs> And he goes, I have to do all that? And I said, yeah, do all of that. And he does it. And he sits down. He says, all right. He said, I'm having a convention in Chicago, and I want you on the stage with me. Bring your ribbons. That's the beginning of a movement right there. That's right. That's capture that for those watching tonight and those on replay is she got a unique opportunity for a very influential, powerful communicator leader, Jack Canfield, took him from 
skepticism, unsureness to embracing and now bringing her into his stage in a moment, that opened up wide doors for you. Yeah, here's the good news about that and then the other news. Okay, here's the good news. The good news is, I don't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any esteem. I'm like a, you know, I'm subservient to my husband and I suddenly want to honor people. I can't, I'm like a bumblebee. I've got to, I've got to go from flower to flower and honor somebody. I'm like, I'm like a gnat in people's eye. You know, wherever I go, I go, leave me alone. I got to honor somebody. And they go, what are you doing? And I go, no, no, you don't understand. It's important. But here's what I discovered. I discovered in the process that I came home and I felt so good after I honored people. And I decided one day, I said, I don't know. I was wealthy. I don't, we were millionaires. And now I'm filled with some kind of internal wealth that I couldn't describe. And I, I sat down and I, I put the ribbon on a scale to see if it weighed anything. <laughs> Seriously, I did it a lot. And I go, I don't understand how you make people that happy. You know, <laughs> why you make me this happy? If you don't weigh anything. It cost the 20 cents, you know, it was a ribbon. Mm -hmm. And um, and a long, long time of learning, how, the ribbon says who I am makes a difference. It starts with acknowledging myself first. So it was, um, it's been a 40 year process of discovering who I be rather than what I do. So let's pause there for a second. I mean, that sets up, our poll for tonight, because you had to think big, you had to get outside of yourself because you didn't at the moment it was tiny and it became something big and got bigger. So our poll, if you want to share that genie is this, how big are your dreams, plans and goals for your career? Yeah. Are they global scale? Are they tiny like my own backyard? Uh, are they radical? I have big or, 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 or are you a realist? Excuse me. And I have no big dreams. Am I beginning to have larger dreams or is big big impact but not global that may be the statewide maybe the regional idea that you can go big there but maybe not globally cast your vote and we're going to come back to that in a little bit but can, let's I, talk can I do it too you can do that if you want but we kind of know you went if I do it will it kick me away no no you are here oh, okay you, I'm you're, gonna you're, be... you can't go anywhere tonight oh, I, you're, you're... I can't do anything you won't do anything anyway okay okay so... goodbye Make it go. <laughs> So let me ask you, when when that match struck and you realized you had something, talk about the growth cycle, because now it is glo global. Now it's millions of people. What did you have to do to really grow and nurture this simple thing that has now become global? OK, I'm going to just tell you a three three prong process that I didn't know that I was doing. And the, the first is my involvement with the Hunger Project, which was me standing on stage at kids' schools and talking about the Hunger Project and how to end world hunger. And then, and then when I finished, there would be, I would have kids and teachers surrounding me. And one boy says, uh, my father just lost his job. We're gonna go homeless. We're gonna lose our home. And I don't know what to do. And a young girl comes up and she said, my mother's got cancer. And I'm beside myself. And then a teacher comes up and says, my son just got arrested for drugs. And I, you know, and I don't, I'm just, so the, everybody would be not talking about hunger, mm -hmm. but the hunger. And something about the conversation um, brought me to, to think about what can I do? Because I didn't have their problems. And when you have an idea and it just like I prayed on it, I just said, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And when the conversation came through, it was a button and I bought a thousand buttons that said who I am makes a difference. My hunger project game. That's how I started. I really had no money. I left my husband. He always took my money. In those days, the woman put the money over to the husband, right? I was broke. I was going millionaire to nothing. And, but I invested for to buy the a thousand buttons and I just walked around and every time I saw somebody pulling a weed 
uh, smiling at their kid, you know, whatever they were doing, I would pull my car off to the side and I'd jump out with my buttons and I'd go, thanks for pulling the weeds. The garden looks great. And I would pop that button on those people. And, um, and then people started to, to want the buttons. And I, you know, I raised a thousand dollars a month for the hunger project back in 1979-80. But here's the next phase of this. Mm -hmm. It's like something happened through me. And, and it's, it, we need to listen to that, okay? Because, you know, you don't want to push it aside. It's big and stuff. I mean, this is an intimate. But when I came, I went away to Israel for a year and a half. I wound up opening and closing an Arab Israeli conference, doing stuff there. But, uh, and, it, and then I left when the uh, Lebanese Israeli war broke out. So I have, and I lived in a kibbutz where uh, a Holocaust survivors. Wow. So my, I went from a millionaire to a migrant worker working in the fields, climbing uh, grapefruit trees, uh, planting uh, banana trees, which were 70 feet tall. I was, I was, I washed floors. I did all of that. So it was completely opposite experience. And when I came home a year and a half later, I live in a very affluent area, <laughs> right by the ocean, okay? And um, when I came home, people were complaining about the fog. I'm living in Middle East crisis. <laughs> I just went, I started to shake them. And I said, do you have any idea who you are? And then a month later, I started to complain about the fog. How quickly we change, right? It got sucked in, absolutely. However, here's what happened. People stopped me. I'm gonna give you two short stories uh, of what happened with the button and how it morphed into the ribbon. Well, I'm having lunch with a friend and a woman comes over to me and says, you're the lady that gave me that button. And the, that was a year and a half ago. And I said, yeah. She said, I'm a school teacher. I come home at night. I'm grading papers. I'm cooking the dinner. My son's come in, they drop their books on the floor. They yell, when's dinner gonna be ready? My husband, he comes in, pops a beer, you know, goes down, looks at the sports on the TV and he yells, when's dinner gonna be ready? She says, I get a headache. I leave the kitchen, I went into the bathroom, I opened my medicine cabinet where I kept my button. I looked at that button and I said, Mabel, who you are makes a difference. And she said, I haven't taken medicine in a year and a half since you gave me that ribbon. That's a mic drop moment right there, everybody. That's that's a serious, take a deep breath, breathe that one in. So it was like, what? I'm not taking medicine in a year and a half. And then I'm walking downtown San Diego and I hear this banging on a office building on the front, on the main floor. And this young man is waving me in like a junior executive or something. And I peek in and he opens his drawer and pulls out the button. And he says, do you remember when you gave me this button? I said, he said, I was, I was roller skating with my, with my son in Balboa Park here. And I kept falling all the time. And you came over and honored me for being a great father. He said, I had just earned my company a quarter of a million dollars and not anybody told me that, gave me a shout out and said, you did a good job. But when I get really, upset about the work and, and the climate, I open the drawer, pull out my button. I say, above all, I'm a great father. There's a simplicity to what you do that draws to the soul, not just a trophy. You're digging into the soul with a very, again, it's personal, it's intimate. At the same time, it's so stinking simple. It breaks all the, and plus it's global. You can do this globally. It, it, it's transferable everywhere, right? Exactly. It's transferable. And, and, and so while that all is happening, here's the opportunities and the obstacles. I started to, I was invited into uh, schools to do you know, drug free and I got 500 bucks and I would do it in a school assembly. And then because I lived so close to the 
to the one of the middle schools, the kids would say, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? And I said, I don't go back into the schools until you get me there because I get kicked out of every school. They think I'm not academic. I got a ribbon. That it's too emotional. They won't, they, they don't like me. Okay. The school board kicks me out. Everybody kicks me out. I, I come back, I, you know, I keep coming, I keep coming. I got three strikes, four strikes, all the strikes you need, okay? So they raised, um, the kids raised um, $2,700 in 1991. That's a boatload of money. Yes. And cake, and cake sales and car washes and to do, to do three school assemblies. And I said this, I said, if I do this, you better get the news behind it because nobody's gonna know, they're not gonna believe what we're about to do. So they got the Los Angeles Times, the San Diego Union Tribune, Channel 8 News, and uh, it was covered on 1100 radio stations with Copley News, okay? And I stood up, now, by the way, this is not, I just make stuff up, okay? I just make something up. And I get up to the microphone and I said, two out of every three of you has been abused and I know it. There's like 800 kids in the auditorium. And I said, so if it's not you, it's somebody on both sides of you. And if you've ever harmed anybody, bullied anybody, put anybody down, I'm gonna ask you to step to the microphone, state your name, what you did and apologize. Have that person come up, shake your hand, high five them, give them a hug. I don't care what you do, but clean it up now. That's what we're going to do. And if you've been hurt by somebody that bullied you, you get up here and you stay at 300 kids line up. Oh, my goodness. 300 kids line up. And, and one after the other, all people need is a space to say, I'm sorry. So you create the space for something truly magical. And again, the chat box is talking about you have the cure for the cancer of the heart and for the cancer, cancer of the, the soul. soul yeah. and, yes. Mm -hmm. And so this is amazing. I'm going to pause. I'm going to go back to our poll here for a second. Let everyone catch their breath. And here's what the results are, Elise. Yes. Global scale. We have a lot of big dreamers here. We have a oh, lot of big God. dreamers. We have a couple that are looking at beginning to see larger dreams. They're, they're getting a glimpse of it now. And some people are saying, yes, they want a big impact, but not global. But look at this. Everyone here is at least admitting They've got the dreams. Oh, now wow. let's help them get to the bigger side, getting where you're at. Because again, like you were number one on a YouTube for 10 weeks with That's the Blue correct. Ribbon story. That's you, right. you, you did use media. You, you intentionally asked for media by asking those kids to do that. You've intentionally done things to blow this up. Yeah, and I didn't even know I was doing it for that reason because I didn't understand. So we didn't have social media in those days. I just knew that I was going to get get my butt get kicked out of the school because it was emotional and not every school was gonna allow that. But yeah, let me tell you, for, for when you listen, listen to your heart about stuff, because when something, it's not easy to step up and out, but it's worth it. It's hard and you're gonna need a mentor. You're gonna need a coach. I, a lot of us have a lot of coaches around us. You, you just need somebody that holds you and will look uh, and, and for you to be accountable to and also to keep you straight, you know, and just make sure that you do what you said you're going to do. But we can't, it, it just sometimes we get all in our head from the neck up and we get really afraid um, to look stupid, you know, make a mistake. Ah, I, okay, I'm going to tell you two things. I'm going to tell you something. This is good for everybody. I was, listened to a, um, a billionaire speak years ago, 40 years ago, and everybody's crowding around him after. And I elbow my five feet tall. I elbow my way in, you know, I get right under his nose and I say, sir, how do I hang out with people like you? And he gives me two words. He said, become, he said, he said, become one. I said, what do I do to become one? He said, three words, make enough mistakes. And I thought, now I can tell you all that I'm a billionaire <laughs> <laughs> because I have made sometimes the same mistake over and over and over again. 
and um, and then I, you know, it's, it's like, and then I need somebody to point it out and give me a tool, give me a way to not do that. Um, the the story that came in, in in Chicken Soup for the Soul that was later made into a television movie that went viral uh, and was number one for ten years, uh, ten years, ten weeks on YouTube. Mm -hmm. May I tell the story? Yes. Um, of course. So, so okay. Um, here, the the thing is, we don't know. I'm sitting in a garage, a cement garage. I left my husband. I got nothing. And I gave away my Mercedes because I couldn't afford to keep it up. I'm a ribbon pinning woman, and um, I'm. A, I think I made a dollar and a quarter on a, some telemarketing thing I was doing in the garage. But I got a call from a teacher in New York who got who bought a bag of ribbons, and she honored each of her students in her high, in her high school class one at a time and told them how much she appreciated them. She cheered each one on for their dreams and placed the ribbon above their heart. And she gave each of them three extra ribbons. And she said, go out and do, let's do a pilot program on a community building project. Honor somebody and pay it forward, give them two extra ribbons and they can honor somebody and the third person and come back next week and let's talk about what happened. This is the story. That afternoon, a, a high school senior goes to a junior executive. This is Wall Street now. He honors the junior executive for helping him with creative, uh, with his career planning. He gives him the ribbon, cheers him on for his dreams, and and the student gives him two extra ribbons and said, "Go honor somebody, and then tell them to honor somebody else and come back and tell me what happened." That afternoon, the junior executive goes to his grouchy boss. And he honors him for being a creative genius and giving him a job, okay? And can you ribbon, yes, okay. Um, cheers him on and he gives him the last ribbon and tells him what this boy is doing in school. The grouchy bus is driving home in New York traffic. Who am I gonna honor? Who am I gonna honor? Gets home and he sits his 14 year old boy down on the sofa and he says, every night I come home, I yell at you for not cleaning up your room and getting better grades in school. But tonight, I just want to tell you that who you are makes a difference, and I love you. And he places the ribbon above the boy's heart. The boy starts to sob. He cannot stop crying. He walks over, opens a drawer, pulls out a gun, looks at his dad and says, I was planning on committing suicide tomorrow, dad, because I didn't think you loved me. And now I don't have to. The teacher called me because the student reported in a class, I am in a cement garage that saved the boy's life. I'm in California, this happened in New York. You can't figure that. I, could, I said to her, I will tell the story for the rest of my life because everything I dream of is about how do you change old communities? And that's part of, I think, what global movements are. It starts with the personal, it's, it grows to a neighborhood, it grows to a backyard, it grows to a church, and then it moves to a region. It moves, and now it's cross country, and then it's global, and you keep exactly. stepping into the moments that are given to you, and it keeps coming back, multiplying, multiplying, and we, we have much more, everybody. We're going to bring you on. Everyone's going to come on camera in a few minutes. We're going to bring you backstage. You're going to ask your own questions of Elise, Grandma Sparky. Uh, how can we best find you? What's the best website, the best way to find you on social media? I'm sure people are gonna love following you. Yeah, so um, it, so you can find us on, on our website. It's Blue Ribbons, B-L-U-E-R-I-B-B-O-N-S.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go there and fish around. You'll see some great videos. And then you wanna get in touch with me directly, okay? I don't know the social media stuff, okay? Uh, <laughs> I think you... You know, oh, oh, I know how to do that. It's Grandma Sparky. Okay, just remembered. Um, but, but the other thing is call, uh, email me absolutely and say Sparky, S-P-A-R-K-Y at Blue Ribbons, B-L-U-E-R-I-B-B-O-N-S dot org. And then just say that you are, you are on this call and then I will, I will call you back and tell you how to do anything. 
make make a big difference. Tell her Trigger sent you, and she really does have the most generous, amazing heart to help you grow, scale, and bring those wild dreams to a higher amplification. We have much, much more to go. Don't forget, How to Rock the Stage every Wednesday night is here with amazing guests like Elise Bridges. Next week, Melissa Reeves will be with us. Your stories matter. You're hearing about stories here tonight, a lot of storytelling. Okay. So your stories matter. So tell them and tell them well. We're going to pick up next week a lot more about your stories. And then on March 30th, Steve Lowell will be our guest, crafting mm-hmm. messages, crafty ones, fun ones, entertaining ones. So the next couple of weeks, we're going to keep building on the storytelling nature of what we got going on here tonight. Mm-hmm. Of course, if you need coaching, if you want help with your virtual events, if you've got a dream of bringing some alive, I love coaching, presenting, and helping you create those events, make them a reality, contact me, rich at richbontrigger.net. And of course, we're here every Wednesday night at seven o'clock Eastern time for How to Rock the Stage.